Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo? He? You come most carefully upon your hour. It is now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. It is bitter cold, and I am sick at heart. Have you had quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand ho! Who's there? Friends to this ground. And liegemen to the Dane. Give you good night. Oh, farewell, honest soldier. Who hath relieved you? Bernardo hath my place. Give you good night. Hola! Bernardo! Say, what? Is Horatio there? A piece of him. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What? Has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him, touching this dreaded sight twice seen of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of this night, that if again this apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Tush, tush, t'will not appear. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story, what we two knights have seen. Well, sit we down. Let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, Marcellus and myself, the bell then beating one. Peace, break thee off. Look where it comes again. In the same figure like the king that's dead. Thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio. Looks it not like the king. Mark it, Horatio. Most like. It harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. Question it, Horatio. What art thou that usurpst this time of night, together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven I charge thee, speak! If there be any good thing to be done, which may to thee do ease and grace to me, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily foreknowing may avoid, speak. Stay and speak! She's here! She's here! She's gone. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you want? Before my God, I might not this believe without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself, it is strange. Thus, twice before, and jump at this dead hour. With Marshal Stark, hath he gone by our watch? In what particular thought to work, I know not. But in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bodes some strange eruption to our state. It was about to speak when the cock crew. And then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. But look, the morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew of yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up. And by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent we shall acquaint him with it as needful in our loves, fitting our duty? Let's do it, I pray. And I this morning know where we shall find him most conveniently. of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. <laughs> Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress of this warlike state, have we, as twere with a defeated joy, with one auspicious and one dropping eye, 
with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, in equal scale weighing delight and dole taken to wife. Nor have we here in Bard your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along. For all, our thanks. Now follows that you know, young Fortinbras, holding a weak supposal of our worth, or thinking by our late dear brother's death our state to be disjoint and out of frame, hath in the skirts of Norway, here and there, sharked up a list of lawless resolutes and hath not failed to pester us with message importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father with all bands of law to our most valiant brother so much for him <laughs> <laughs> and now Laertes What's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favor to return to France, from whence though willingly I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now, I must confess, that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France, and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laborsome petition. And at last, upon his will, I sealed my hard consent. <laughs> I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine, and thy best graces. Spend it at thy will. But now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son. A little more than kin, and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy native color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest is common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye nor the dejected haviour in the visage, together with all forms, modes, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passeth show. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. It is unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven. A heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. Throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne. 
and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart toward you. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier cousin and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, it is a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace whereof, no jocund health that Denmark drinks today, but the great cannon to the clouds shall tell, and the kings rouse, the heavens shall brew it again. Free speaking earthly thunder. into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God. God. How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fiant. Oh, fie. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this. But two months dead. Nay, not so much. Not too. So excellent a king. There was to this Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember. Why, she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet, within a month, let me not think on frailty. Thy name is woman. A little month. Nor ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body. Like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she. Oh, God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother. But no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within a month ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her gallid eyes. She married. Almost wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not or it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well. Horatio, or I do forget myself. The same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. But 
What make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus. My noble lord. I'm very glad to see you. Good evening, sir. But what is your affair at Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. Pretty, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven or ever I had seen that day, Horatio. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. So, who? My lord, the king. Your father. King, my father, season your admiration for a while with an attent ear, till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead waste in the middle of the night, been thus encountered a figure like your father. Armored at point exactly, Capape appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Uh, this to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch where, as they had delivered both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. It's very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs. But this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, we my, do lord. my lord. Armed, say you? Armed, Armed my lord. lord. What looked he? Frowningly? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Pale or red? Oh, nay, very pale. And fixed his eyes upon you? Most constantly. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like. Very like. His beard was grizzled. No? It was, as I have seen it in his life, a sable silvered. I will watch tonight. Perchance, it will walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it. Though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. I will requite your loves. So fare you well. Upon the platform twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty, duty to your honor. Your loves as mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit. In arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come? Till then... Sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth o'erwhelm them to men's eyes. My necessaries are embarked. <laughs> Farewell, <laughs> and sister. As the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? Mm. For Hamlet and the trifling of his favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more but so. Think it, no more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear his greatness, Wade. His will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain. If with too credent ear you list his songs or lose your heart, 
or your chaste treasure open to his unmastered importunity. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister. And keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But good, my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Oh, fear me not. I stay too long, but here my father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory, look that character, give thy thoughts no tongue nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. <laughs> Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear it that the opposed may beware of thee. <laughs> Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy. Rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend. And borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This, above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell. My blessing, season this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. <laughs> Your servants then go. The time invites. Farewell, Ophelia. And remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. Uh, what is it, Ophelia, he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Marry well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. What is between you? Give me up the truth. Uh, he hath, my lord, of late, made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Pooh! You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary. I will teach you. Think yourself a baby that you've tamed these tenders for true pay that are not sterling. <laughs> Tender yourself more dearly. Or, not to crack the wind of the poor phrase running it thus, you'll tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion. My fashion, you may call it. Go to, go to. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with all the holy vows of heaven. I springes to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, you must not take for fire. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. Oh. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it. I charge you. I shall obey, my lord. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed, I heard it not. 
It then draws near the season wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. What does this mean, my lord? King doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassail, and the swaggering upspring reels. <laughs> and as he drains his drafts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, marry, is it? But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manor born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. Look, my lord, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace, defend us! Is our spirit of health or goblin damned? Bring with the airs from heaven or blasts from hell? in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet. King. Father. Royal Dane. Oh, answer me. What should we do? It beckons you to go away with it as if it's some apartment in desire to your love. But do not go with it. No, by no means. Will not speak. I will follow it. Do not, my lord! Why, what should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And for my soul, what can it do to that? Being a thing immortal as itself, it waves me forth again. I'll follow it. What if it tempt you toward the flood, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff, and there assume some other horrible form which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness? It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee! You shall not go, my lord! Hold off your hands! Be ruled! You shall not go! My fate cries out! and makes each petty artery in this body as hardy as the Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen! By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me! I say away! Go on, I'll follow thee! He waxes desperate with imagination. Let's follow! Tis not fit thus to obey him! And after! To what issue will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it! Nay! Let's follow him! Whither would thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. List, oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, oh heaven, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love may sweep to my revenge. I find thee apt, now Hamlet here. It is given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. So the whole year of Denmark is, by a forged process of my death, rankly abused. But know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. O oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle, I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. It's soft, the things I said to the morning air. Brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven in a vial, and in the porches of mine ears did pour the leprous distillment. Thus was I sleeping. By a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched. Cut off even in the blossoms of my sin. Unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed, no reckoning made. But sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible, horrible, most horrible! If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven. Fare thee well at once. 
The glowworm shows the matin to be near and begins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu. Adieu. Hamlet, remember me. of heaven, all oh, earth. What else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, I hold, hold my heart. And you, my sinews, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee. I, thou poor ghost. While memory holds a seat in this distracted globe, remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all forms, all pressures past that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven! Pernicious woman. Oh, villain. Villain. Smiling, damned villain. My tables, my tables. It, it is, I sit it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle. There you are. Now to my word! It is it you! It is you! It's not in my knee! I'm not trying to want it! My Lord! Lord Hamlet! Heaven secure him! So be it. How is it, my noble lord? What news, my lord? Wonderful. Good, my lord, tell it. No, you will reveal it. Not I, my lord, by heaven. Nor I, my lord. Nor I, my lord. I'll say you then. What heart of man once think it, but you'll be secret. I, by heaven, my lord. I, my lord. my lord. There's never a villain dwelling in all Denmark. But he's an arrant knave. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Why, right. You are in the right. And so without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire, shall point you. For every man has business and desire, such as it is. And for my own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you. Heartily. Yes. Faith. Heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes. By St. Patrick, but there is Horatio, and much offense too. Touching this vision here, it is an honest ghost. That, let me tell you, for your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never make known. What you have seen this night. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. Swear. Oh, boy. Say so, so. I thought they had true penny. Come on. You hear this fellow in the cellarage? Consent to swear. Propose the oath, my lord. Never to speak. Of this that you have seen. Swear. Swear. Hic et ubique. <laughs> then we'll shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen. Never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear. Swear. Well said, old mole. 
transworking the earth so fast. Once more removed, good friends. Oh, day and night, this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here, as before, never so help you mercy, how strange or odd soe'er I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet to put an antic disposition on, that you, at such time seeing me, never shall, with arms encumbered thus, or with this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrase as, well, well, we know, or we could, and if we would, or such ambiguous giving out to note that you know aught of me, this not to do, so grace and mercy at your most need help you swear. Swear. Rest. Rest. Perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, with all my love I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is may do to express his love and friending to you, God willing, shall not lack. Let us go in together. And still your fingers on your lips, I pray. is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Then, come, let's go together. Now, now. Ophelia, what's the matter? Oh, my lord. My lord, I've been so affrighted. With what in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my chamber, Lord Hamlet, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love. My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm. And with his other hand, thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus, waving up and down. He raised a sigh so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes, for out of doors he went without their help, and to the last bended their light on me. Come, go we to the king. This must be known. Come. My liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night night, time is time, were nothing but to waste night, day and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit and tediousness that limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. Mad call I it, for to define true madness, what is but to be nothing else but mad. <laughs> but let that go. More matter. With less art. Madam, I swear I use no art at all. That he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity, and, and pity tis, tis true. <laughs> A foolish figure. But farewell it, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then. And now remains that we find out the cause of this effect. Or rather say the cause of this defect. For this effect, defective, comes by cause. Thus it remains, and the remainder thus. Perpend. I have a daughter, have while she is mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Now, gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most Beautified Ophelia. <laughs> That's an ill phrase. <laughs> it's a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. <laughs> but you shall hear. 
in her excellent white bosom these, <laughs> etc. Came this from Hamlet to her? Madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. <laughs> Doubt that the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. O oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh, most best, believe it, adieu, thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him. Hamlet, this inobedience hath my daughter shown me. But how has she received his love? What do you think of me? As of a man faithful and honorable. I would fain prove so. But what might you think if I had seen this hot love on the wing, as I perceived it, I must tell you that before my daughter told me, what might you think, or my dear majesty, your queen here think, if I had looked upon this love with idle sight? <laughs> what might you think? No. I went round to work, and my young mistress thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince out of thy star. This must not be. And then I precepts gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done. She took the fruits of my advice, and he, repelled, a short tale to make, fell into a sadness, and then into a fast, and, and thence into a watch, and thence into a, a weakness, and thence into a lightness, and by this declension into the madness within now he raves. And all we mourn for. Do you think tis this? It may be. Very like. If circumstances lead me, I will find where truth is hid, though it were hid within the center. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time will I loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind the arras. Mark the encounter. If he love her not and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant to a state, but keep a farm and carters. We will try it. But look, where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away. I do beseech you both away. I'll board him presently. How does my good Lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy! Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. <laughs> no, not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? Aye, sir, to be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, being a good kissing carrion... <laughs> have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. Still harping on my daughter. He's far gone, far gone. What do you read, my lord? Words. 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 What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, the matter that you read, my lord. Slanders, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum. And they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hams. All the which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down. For you yourself, sir, shall grow old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backward. Though this be madness, 
yet there's method in it. My lord, will you walk out of the air? Into my grave? Indeed, that is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. A happiness that madness often hits on. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all. Except my life. Except my life. Except my life. There you will, my lord. These tedious old fools. How dost thou killed in stern, ah, Rosencrantz? Good lads, how do ye both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very button. Nor the soles of her shoe? Neither, my lord. Then you live about her waist or in the middle of her favors. Faith, her private sweet. <laughs> in the secret parts of fortune. Most true, she is a strumpet. What's the news? None, my lord, but the world's grown honest. And is doomsday near, but your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Then is the world one? A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons. Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. <laughs> Why, then tis none to you. For there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why, then your ambition makes it one. It is too narrow for your mind. Oh, God. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. Were it not that I have bad dreams. Which dreams indeed are ambition, for the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. The dream itself is but a shadow. Truly, and I hold ambition of so airy and light a quality that it is but a shadow's shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we to the court, for by my faith I cannot reason. We'll wait, we'll wait upon you. No such matter! I will not sort you with the rest of my servants, for to speak to you like an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord. No other occasion. Beggar that I am, I am even poor in thanks, but I thank you. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, come, deal justly with me. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose you were sent for. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the rights of our fellowship by the obligation of our ever-preserved love, be even and direct with me, whether you were sent for or no. What say you? Nay, then... I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for.
I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery and your secrecy to the king and queen molt no further. I have, of late, but wherefore, I know not, lost all my mirth. Forgone all custom of exercise, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire, oh, it appeareth nothing to me foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculties. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. And yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. <laughs> No woman neither, though by your smiling you would seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We pass by them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. He that plays the king shall be welcome. His majesty shall have tribute of me. What players are they? Even those you were wont to take such delight in, the tragedians of the city. There are the players. Gentlemen, <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Come, your hands, your hands. You are welcome to Elsinore. But my uncle, father, and aunt, mother are deceived in this. In what, my lord? I am but mad, north, northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. Well be with you, gentlemen. Why, right, sir, you say right, for so it was on Monday morning, indeed. My lord! I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you. When Rossius was an actor in Rome... The actors are come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. On my honor. Then came each actor on his ass. The best actors in the world for either tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, scene individable, a poem unlimited. Seneca cannot be too heavy nor plotters too light for the law of the writ and the liberty. These are the only men. Oh, Jephthah, judge of Israel, what a treasure hadst thou. What treasure had he, my lord? Why, one fair daughter, and no more, the which he loved, passing well, still harping on my daughter. But look where my abridgment comes, masters! You are welcome! You are welcome, all, oh, old friend. I'm glad to see thee well. You are all welcome. We lean to it like French falconers. Fly at anything we see. We'll have a speech, straight. Come, give us a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. What speech, my good lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once. Although it was never acted, or if it was, not above once, for the play, I remember, pleased not the million. It was caviar to the general. One speech in it I chiefly loved. It was Aeneas' tale to Dido, and they're about of it, especially when he speaks of Priam's slaughter. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see, let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast, tis not so. It begins with Pyrrhus. Rugged Pyrrhus, 
roasted in wrath and fire, hath now his dread and black complexion smeared with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, and thus sized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus old grandsire Priam seeks. So, proceed you. Poor God, my lord, well spoken, <laughs> with, with good accent and good discretion. None he finds him striking two short dead Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives. In rage strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then, as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. This is too long. We shall to the barbers with your beard, prithee, say on. He's for a jig or a tale of baudry, or he sleeps. Say on, come to Hecuba. But who, our woe, had seen the Moblet Queen? Moblet Queen. That's good. Moblet Queen is good. Run barefoot up and down. A cloth upon that head where late the diadem stood. Oh, if the gods themselves did see her then. When she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made, unless things mortal move them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look where he's not changed his color and has tears in his eyes. Prithee, no more. Well. We'll have thee speak out the rest of this soon. Good my lord, will you see the players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used. For they are the abstracts and brief chronicles of the time. After your death, you were better have a bad epitaph than their ill report while you live. Come, sirs. Follow him, friends. We'll hear a play tomorrow. Just hear me, old friend. Can you play the murder of Gonzago? Why, my lord? We'll have it tomorrow night. You could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines, which I would set down and insert in it. Could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. Follow that, lord. And look you, mock him not. <laughs> well, my good friends, I'll leave you till night. You are welcome to Elsinore. Good, my lord. I so God by you. Now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage wand Tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing. For Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him? Or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do, had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech, make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. 
Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Who calls me villain? Breaks my paint across, tweaks me by the nose, plucks off my beard and blows it in my face. Who does me this, huh? Soons. I should take it, for it cannot be but I am pigeon-livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter, or ere this I should have fatted all the region kites with this slave's awful bloody body villain, remorseless. Treacherous, lecherous, kindness, villain! Thou oh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I? This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father, murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scallion. Fire out! Fool! About my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have, by the very cunning of the scene, been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before my uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he would blench, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be a devil. The devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king! Sweet Gertrude, leave us now. For we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as to her by accident, may hear of front Ophelia. Her father and myself, lawful as files, will so bestow ourselves that seeing unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge and gather by him as he has behaved if it be the affliction of his love or no that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wonted way again. To both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here, read on this book, that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die to 
sleep. No more. And by sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Which is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep. The chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely pangs of disprized love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly door with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment, with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Good my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord. I have remembrances of yours that I have longed long to re-deliver. I pray you, now receive them. No. No. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. Take these again, for to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There. My lord. <laughs> Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means, your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly, for the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bawd than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. This was sometime a paradox. Now the time gives it proof. I did love you once. Oh, indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. 
I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I'm very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do, crawling between heaven and earth? We are Aaron's knaves all. Believe, none of us, go thy ways to a nunnery. Where is your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell! Oh, help him, you sweet heaven! If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Oh. To a nunnery, go, farewell. For if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men are well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go, and quickly to farewell. Flowers, we store him. I've heard of your paintings, too, well enough. God has given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, you amble, and you lisp. And you nickname God's creatures, and you make your wantonness, your ignorance, go to! Oh, no more on! It hath made me mad. They say we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one, shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. and wretched that sucked the honey of his music vows now see that noble and most sovereign reason like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh that unmatched form and feature of blown youth blasted with ecstasy Oh, woe is me, to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love. His affections do not that way tend. Nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul, o'er which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger. The which for to prevent. I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. What think you want? It shall do well. But yet I do believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. How now? Ophelia. I, I 
You need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please. But if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him. I'll be placed, so please you, within the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best you'll think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue, but if you mouth it, as many of our players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my lines. No, do not saw the air too much with your hand thus, but use all gently, for in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. I warrant, Your Honor. Be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. With this special observance, that you o'erstep not the modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as twere the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her feature, scorn her own image, the very age and body of the time, his form and pressure. Now this overdone, or come tardy off, though it make the unskillful laugh, cannot but make the judicious grieve. The censure of the which one must in your allowance or weigh a whole theater of others. Oh, there be players that I have seen play and heard others praise, and that highly, not to speak it profanely, that having neither the accent of Christians nor the gait of Christian, pagan, nor man have so strutted and bellowed that I have thought that some of nature's journeymen had made men and not made them well. They imitated humanity so abominably. I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us, sir. Oh, reform it altogether. Make you ready. What oh, Horatio? Here, sweet lord. At your service. Horatio? Thou art e'en as just a man as e'er my conversation cope with all. Oh, my dear lord. Nay, do not think I flatter. For what advancement may I hope from thee, that no revenue hast but thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee? Why should the poor be flattered? <laughs> Dost thou hear? Since my dear soul was mistress of her choice and could of men distinguish her election, she hath sealed thee for herself. For thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing. A man that fortune's buffets and rewards has tamed with equal thanks. And blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to sound what stop she please. Oh, give me that man that is not passion's slave. And I will wear him in my heart's core, I, in my heart of heart, as I do thee. Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it 
comes near the circumstance which I told thee of my father's death, that for thee, when thou seest that act afoot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle, give him heedful note, for I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face, and after, we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if he steal aught the while this play is playing and scape detecting, I will pay the theft. They're coming to the play. I must be idle. Get your face. How fares her cousin Hamlet? Excellent, faith. Of the chameleon's dish. <laughs> I eat the air. Promise crammed. You cannot feed capon so. <laughs> I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, no mine, no! <laughs> my lord, you played once at the university, you say? That I did, my lord. <laughs> and was accounted a good actor. <laughs> what did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf there. <laughs> Be the players ready? I may not. Stay upon your patience. Come hither, my good habit. Sit by me. No, madam. Here's metal more attractive. Do you mark that? Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. I, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. <laughs> That's a fair thought. To lie between maids' legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. <laughs> you are merry, my lord. Who, I? I, my lord. Oh, God, your only jig maker. What should a man do but be merry? For look you how cheerfully my mother looks, and my father died within two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long? Oh, heavens. Die two months ago and not forgotten yet. Then there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. Full thirty times hath Phoebus' cart gone round Neptune's salt wash and Tellus' orbit ground. Since love our hearts and hymen did our hands unite, co-mutual in most sacred bands. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state. Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do, and thou shalt live in this fair world behind, honored, beloved. And haply one as kind for husband shalt thou. Oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. Second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first? Wormwood. A second time I kill my husband dead, when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you think what now you speak, but what we do determine oft we break. What to ourselves in passion we propose, the passion ending doth the purpose lose. Think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to me give food, nor heaven light. Sport and repose lock from me day and night. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now, is deeply sworn. Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull, and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain. There'll never come this chance between us twain. Madam, how like you the play? The lady does protest too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in it? No, they do but jest. 
poison in jest. No offense in the world. What do you call the play? The Mouse Trap. It is a knavish piece of work, but what of that? Your Majesty and we that have free souls, it touches us not. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. Begin, murderer. Leave thy damnable faces and begin. Come, the croaking raven doth bellow for revenge. Oh, it's black. Hands up. Drugs fit. And time agreeing. Confederate season, else no creature seeing. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected, with Hecate's band thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and dire property, unwholesome life, usurps immediately. He poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. What? Frighted with false fire? The king rises. There's my lord. Give all the play. Give me some light. Away! Light! Good Horatio, I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pound. Didst perceive? Very well, my lord. Upon the talk of poisoning? I did very well note. Aha! Come, some music. For if the king like not the comedy, belike he likes it not, Purdy. My lord, vouchsafe me a word with you. Sir, a whole history. The king, sir. I sir, what of him? Is in his retirement marvelous distempered. With drink, sir? Good, my lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I am tame, sir. Pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Nay, good, my lord, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do your mother's commandment. I cannot, sir. What, my lord? Make you a wholesome answer. My wit's diseased. But, sir, such answer as I can make, you shall command. Or rather, as you say, my mother, therefore, no more but to the matter. My mother, you say? Then thus, she says, your behavior hath struck her into amazement and admiration. Oh, wonderful son that can so astonish a mother. But is there no sequel at the heels of this mother's admiration? In part, she desires to speak to you in her closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey. Were she ten times our mother? Have you any further trade with us? My lord, you once did love me. And do still, by these pickers and stealers. Good, good, my lord, what is the cause of your distemper? You do surely bar the door of your own liberty if you deny your grief to your friends. Sir, I lack advancement. How can that be when you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark? Aye, sir, but while the grass grows, the proverb is something musty. To withdraw with you. Why do you go about to recover the wind of me, as if you would drive me into a toil? Oh, my lord, if my duty be too bold, my love is too unmannerly. I do not well understand that. Will you play upon this pipe? My lord, I cannot. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. It is as easy as lying. Govern these vintages with your fingers and thumb. Give it breath with your mouth, and it will discourse most eloquent music. Look you, these are the stops. But these cannot I command to any utterance of harmony. I have not the skill. Why, look you now, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would seem to know my stops. You would pluck out the heart of my mystery. You would sound me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. And there is much music, excellent voice in this little organ, yet cannot you make it speak. It's blood. Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? 
call me what instrument you will, though you can fret me, you cannot play upon me. God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen would speak with you, and that presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? Yes, sir. By the mast, tis like a camel, indeed. Methinks it is like a weasel. It is backed like a weasel. Or like a whale. Very like a whale. And I will come to my mother by and by. They fool me to the top of my bent. I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friends. Tis now the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now could I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on. Soft. Now to my mother. O oh heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. Oh, my offense is rank. smells to heaven. It has the primal eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Pray can I not, though inclination be as sharp as will. My stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. Like a man to double business bound, I stand in pause where I shall first begin and both neglect. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy? confront the visage of offense. And what's in prayer but this twofold force? To be forestalled ere we come to fall. Or pardoned being down. Then I'll look up. My fault is past. But oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be, since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned and retain the offense in the corrupted currents of this world, offense's gilded hand may shove by justice. And oft tis seen the wicked prize itself buys out the law. But tis not so above. Oh, wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Oh, limed soul that's struggling to be free but more engaged. Help, angels. Make a say. Ow. Stubborn knees. 
strings of steel. Be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. a praying and now I'll do it and so he goes to heaven and so am I revenged that would be scanned Villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, do this same villain send to heaven. Why, this is higher in salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly, full of bread, with all his crimes broad blown, as flush as may. And am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he's fit and seasoned for his passage? drunk or sleep or in his rage or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed at gaming, swearing or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it then trip him that his heels may kick at heaven and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell whereto it goes Days. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go. He will come straight. Look you, lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace has screened and stood between much heat and him. I'll silence me, even here. Pray you, be round with him. I warrant you fear me not. Mother! Withdraw. I hear him coming. Mother! Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. With your wings, you heavenly guards. What would your gracious figure? Oh, he's mad. Do not come, your tardy son, to chide. Do not forget. This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. Amazement on thy mother sits. Speak to her, Hamlet. Who is it with you, lady? Alas. How is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do hold discourse, O oh, gentle son? Whereon do you look? On him! On him! Look you how pale he glares! His form and cause conjoined, preaching to stones which make them capable. Oh, do not look upon me, lest with this piteous action you convert my stern effects. Then what I have to do will want true color. Tears perchance for blood. Whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? No, nothing at all. Yet no. all that is, I see. No, do you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Why look you there? Oh. My father, in his habit as he lived. Look where he goes even now, out at the portal. coinage of your brain, this bodiless creation, ecstasy is very coming in. Ecstasy? 
My pulse is yours, doth temperately keep time and makes us healthful music. It is not madness that I have uttered. Mother, for love of grace, lay not that flattering unction to your soul that not your trespass, but my madness speaks. It will but skin and film the ulcerous place, whilst rank corruption, mining all within, infects unseen. Confess yourself to heaven, repent what's past, avoid what is to come. Do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them ranker. Forgive me this, my virtue, for in the fatness of these Percy times, virtue itself a vice must pardon, beg, yea, curb and woo for leave to do him good. Hamlet, <laughs> well, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Throw away the worser part of it, and live the purer with the other half. Mother, good night. Go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue, if you have it not. Refrain tonight, and that shall lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy, for use almost can change the stamp of nature. Once more, good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For this same Lord, I do repent. Heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this, and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. I will bestow him, and will answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. This bad begins. And worse remains behind. What shall I do? Not this, by no means, that I bid you do. Let the bloat king tempt you again to bed and let him for a pair of reachy kisses or paddling in your neck with his damned fingers make you to ravel all this matter out. That I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured. If words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. to England. You know that. Like I had forgot. This man shall set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Mother. This counselor is now most still, most secret, and most grave, who was in life a foolish, prating knave. Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Which is the mightier? 
in his lawless fit. Behind the arras, hearing something stir, cries, a rat, a rat. And in this brainish apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed. It had been so with us had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all. To you yourself. To us. To everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be laid to us, whose providence should have kept short, restrained, and out of haunt this mad young man. Where is he gone? To draw apart the body he has killed. Oh, Gertrude, come away. The sun no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we will ship him hence. And this vile deed we must, with all our majesty and skill, both countenance and excuse. Safely stowed. Who calls on Hamlet? Oh, here they come. What have you done, my lord, with the dead body? Compounded it with dust, whereto tis kin. Tell us where it is, that we may take it thence and bear it to the chapel. Do not believe it. Believe what, my lord? That I can keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, to be demanded of a sponge, what replication should be made by the son of a king? Take you me for a sponge, my lord? I, sir, that soaks up the king's countenance, his rewards, his authorities. But such officers do the king best service in the end. He keeps them like an ape and apple in the corner of his jaw, first mouthed to be last swallowed. When he needs what you have gleaned, it is but squeezing you, and sponge, you shall be dry again. My lord, you must tell us where the body is and go with us to the king. The body is with the king, but the king is not with the body. The king is a thing. A thing, my lord. Of nothing. Bring me to him. Now, Hamlet. Where's Polonius? At supper. At supper? Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are in at him. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat us, and we fat ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggar are but variable service. Two dishes, but to one table. That's the end. Alas. Alas. A man may fish with the worm that hath ate of a king, and eat of the fish that hath fed of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Nothing. But to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send thither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But if indeed you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go seek him there. He will stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed for thine especial safety, which we do tender, as we dearly grieve for that which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore prepare thyself. The bark is ready and the wind at help. The associates tend and everything is bent for England. For England, I am it. Good. So is it. If thou knewst our purposes. 
I see a cherub that sees them. Come, for England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother. Come. For England. Follow him at foot. Tempt him with speed aboard. Delay it not. I'll have him hence tonight. Away! For everything is sealed and done that else leans on the affair. Pray you make haste! <laughs> If my love thou holdst at aught, as my great power thereof may give thee sense, thou mayst not coldly set our sovereign process, which imports at full, with letters congruing to that effect, the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England. For like the hectic in my blood he rages. And thou must cure me. Till I know it is done. Howe'er my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. Go, Captain. From me greet the Danish king. Tell him that by his license, Fortinbras craves the conveyance of a promised march over his kingdom. You know the rendezvous. If that his majesty would aught with us, we shall express our duty in his eye and let him know so. I will do it, my lord. Go safely on! Good sir. Whose powers are these? They are of Norway, sir. How purposed, sir, I pray you against some part of Poland. Who commands them? The nephew to old Norway, Fortinbras. Goes it against the main of Poland or for some frontier? We go to gain the little patch of ground that hath in it no profit but the name. To pay five ducats, five, I would not farm it. Why, then the Pole will never defend it. Yes, it is already garrisoned. Thank you, sir. God by you, sir. Would it please you go, my lord? I'll be with you straight. Go a little before. How oh, all occasions do inform against me for my dull revenge. What is a man, if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast, no more. Sure he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, Gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fast in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, a thought which quartered hath but one part wisdom and ever three parts coward. I do not know why yet I live to say this thing's to do. Should I have cause and will and strength and means to do it? Examples gross as earth exhort me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit with divine ambition puffed makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an eggshell. 
rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honor's at the stake. How stand I then? Could have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep while to my shame I see the imminent death of 20,000 men that for a fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds fight for a plot whereon the numbers cannot try the cause which is not tomb enough and continent to hide the slain this time forth my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark why how oh, now Ophelia How should I your true love know from another one? I is cockle at Downstar and the sandal too. Alas, <laughs> sweet lady, what imports this song? Say you? Nay, pray you, Mark. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head, a grass green turf. At his heels, a stone. But who did you, Mark? White is shroud, the mountain no. snow. My lord, look here. Flowers. Which be wept to the grave did not go where true love <laughs> showers. How do you, pretty lady? Oh, Ooh, well, God ill'd you. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know that we are. But we know not what we may be. God be at your table. Conceit upon the father. Break you! Let us have no words of this. But when they ask you what it means, say you this. Tomorrow is St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning the time. And... I am made at your window to be your valentine. Pretty Ophelia. Indeed. La. Mm. 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 Without a nose, I'll make an end on it. By just and by St. Charity. Alack and fie for shame. Young men will do it if they come to it. By cock they are to blame. Quoth she, before you tumbled me, you promised me to wed. He answers, so what I had done by yonder son, and thou hadst not come to my bed, and thou hadst not come to my bed. How long hath she been thus? I, I hope all will be well. We must be patient. But I cannot choose but weep to think they would lay him in a cold crowd. My brother shall know of it. And so I thank you 
for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Oh, good night, ladies. Oh, good night. Sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Follow her close. Give her good watch, I pray you. Oh, this is the poison of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude. When sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. What noise is this? Save yourself, my lord, for young Laertes in a riotous head or bears your officers. The rabble call him lord. They cry, choose we. Laertes shall be king. Taps, hands, and tongues applaud it to the clouds. Laertes shall be king. Laertes, king! How oh, cheerfully on the false trail they follow. Oh, this is counter, you false Danish doves. Where is this king? Oh, thou vile king. Give me my father. Calmly, good lady. That drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard. Cries cuckold to my father. Brands the harlot even here between the chaste unsmirched brow of my true mother. What is the cause, Laertes, that thy rebellion looks so giant-like? Let him go, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Let him go, Gertrude. Speak, man. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. To hell, allegiance. Vows to the blackest devil. Conscience and grace to the profoundest pit. I dare damnation. To this point I stand that both the worlds I give to negligence, let come what comes, only I'll be revenged most truly for my father. Good Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father's death, is it in your revenge that swoops take, you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser? None but his enemies. Will you know them, then? To his good friends. Thus wide I'll open my arms, and like the kind life-rendering pelican, repass them with my blood. Aye, now you speak like a good child, and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death, and am most sensibly in grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment, peer, as day does to your eye. Oh, now, what noise is this? Heat dry up my brains. Tears seven times salt burn out the sense and virtue of mine eye. By heavens, thy madness shall be paid by weight till our scale turn the beam. O oh, Rose of May, dear maid, kind sister. Oh, oh, heavens, is possible a young maid's wits may be as mortal as an old man's life? Bore him barefaced on the bier, and in his grave rained many a tear. 
It is the false steward that stole his master's daughter. This nothing's more than a matter. There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you, love. Remember. Here's pansies. That's for thoughts. Here's fennel for you. And columbines. Here's room for you. And some for me. We may call it Herb of Grace of Sundays. Oh, you must wear your rule with a difference. <laughs> There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered. All when my father died. They say he made a good end. Go oh, to the deathbed, he never will come again. His beard was as white as the snow. Oh, flaxen was his ball. He's gone, he's gone. We got to lay him off. No. I'll be with you. Do you see this, oh God? There it is. I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right. Make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and let them hear and judge twixt you and me. And where the offense is, let the great axe fall. I pray you, go with me. Horatio, when thou shalt have overlooked this, give this fellow some means to the king. He has letters for him. And repair thou to me with as much speed as thou wouldst fly death. I have words to speak in thine ear will make thee dumb. This good fellow will bring thee where I am. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern hold their course for England. Of them I have much to tell thee. Farewell. He that thou knowest thine, Hamlet. Come, I will give you way for these your letters, and do it the speedier, that you may direct me to him from whom you brought them. And so have I, a noble father lost, a sister driven into desperate terms, but my revenge will come. Break not your sleeps for that. I loved your father, and we love ourselves, and that, I hope, will teach you to imagine how now, what news? Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. This to your majesty, this to the queen. From Hamlet? Hey, that is, you shall hear them. Leave us. High and mighty. 
You shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow I shall beg leave to see your kingly eyes when I shall recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet. What should this mean? Are all the rest come back? Or is it some abuse and no such thing? Are you the hand? It is Hamlet's character. Naked. And in a postscript here, he says alone. Can you advise me? I am lost in it, my lord. But let him come. It warms the very sickness in my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth, thus diest thou. Will you be ruled by me? So you will not all rule me to a peace. To thine own peace! If he be now returned, I will work him to an exploit now ripe in my device, under the which he shall not choose but fall. And for his death, no wind of blame shall breathe, but even his mother shall uncharge the practice and call it accident. My lord, I will be ruled. The rather if you could devise it so that I might be the organ. It falls right. You have been talked of since your travel much, and that in Hamlet's hearing, for a quality wherein they say you shine. What quality, my lord? For art and exercise in your defense, and for your rapier most especially. Now, out of this. What out of this, my lord? Hamlet comes back. What would you undertake? to show yourself your father's son in deed, more than in words, to cut his throat in the church. No place indeed should murder sanctuarize. Revenge should have no bounds. But good Laertes, will you do this? Keep close within your chamber. Hamlet returned shall know you are come home. We'll put on those, shall praise your excellence, commend your fame, bring you in fine together, and wager on your heads. He, being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the foils. So with ease, or with a little shuffling, you may choose a sword unbated, and in a class of practice, Requite him for your father. I will do it. And for the purpose, I'll anoint my sword. I bought an unction of a mountebank so mortal that if I but scratch him slightly, it may be death. Let's further think on this. If this should fail. So let me see. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunnings. I have it. When in your motion you are hot and dry, and that he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the nonce, whereon but sipping, if he by chance escape your venomed stuck, our purpose may hold there. Stay, what noise? How now, sweet queen? One woe doth tread upon another's heels. So fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Or where? There is a willow grows aslant the brook that shows his hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There, with fantastic garlands did she come of crowflowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples that liberal shepherds give a grosser name, but our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There, on the pendant boughs, a coronet weeds clambering to hang. An envious sliver broke 
when down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid like a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes as one incapable of her own distress, or like a creature native and endued unto that element. But long it could not be, till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Alas, then she is drowned. Drowned! Too much of water hast thou, poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. And yet it is our trick, nature her custom holds, let shame say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly drowns it. Let's follow. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. Therefore, let's follow. In youth, when I did love, did love me, but it was very sweet to contract all the time for a Maya behold. Oh, me thought there was nothing. Thought there was nothing of me. Mm. This fellow, no feeling of his business that he sings at grave making. Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. And so, the hand of little employment hath the daintier mm -hmm. sense. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade, for and a shrouding sheet. Oh, a pit of clay for to be made, for such a guest is meat. I'll speak to this fellow. Whose grave's this, sirrah? Mine, sir. Oh, a pit of clay. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. <laughs> you lie out on, sir, and therefore tis not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it, to be in it, and say tis thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? for no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who's to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. Absolute, the knave is. We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days of the year, I came to it that day, our last King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? <laughs> Every fool can tell that. Twas the day young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent into England. Aye, Mary, why was he sent into England? Why, because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there. Or if he do not, tis no great matter there. Why? Twill not be seen in him there. There the men are as mad as he. <laughs> how came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, aim with losing his wits. Upon what ground? We're here in Denmark. I have been sexton here, man and boy, 30 years. How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, he will last you some uh, eight year or nine year. Here's a skull now. Hath lain you in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? <laughs> A horse and mad fellow's it was. <laughs> Who do you think it was? Nay, I know not. He, he a pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He pulled a flag and a furnish on my head once. <laughs> His same skull, sir, was... <laughs> sir? <laughs> Yorick's skull. The king's jester. This. In that. Let me see. Poor Yorick. 
I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles? Your songs? Your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning? Quite chop-fallen? Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick to this favor. She must come. Make her laugh at that. I pray thee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Does thou think Alexander looked at this fashion in the earth? Even so. And smelt so? Even so, my lord. To what base uses we may return, Horatio. So, here comes the king. Queen, the courtiers. Who is this they follow, and with such maimed rights? This does betoken the corpse they follow did with desperate hand for do its own life. It was of some estate. Couch me a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes. Very noble youth. Mark, what ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful, and but that great command or sways the order, she should in ground unsanctified have lodged till the last trumpet. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. The fair Ophelia. Sweets to the sweet. Farewell. I hoped thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have decked sweet maid. And not to have strewed thy grave. Hold off the earth a while. Till I have caught her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust upon the quick and dead to love this flatter mountain you have made to a top old Pelion or the skyish head of blue Olympus. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane! The devil take thy soul! Come on, please, sir! Come on, 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 sir! Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. The love of God, forbear him. Soon show me what thou'll do. Would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself, drink up Isel, eat a crocodile. I'll do it. This is mere madness. And thus a while the fit will work on him. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew. The dog will have his day. Pray you, good Horatio, wait upon him. Gertrude, set some watch over your son.
strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. This grave shall have a living monument. So much for this, sir. Now shall you see the other. You do remember all the circumstances? Remember it, my lord. Sir, in my heart there was a kind of fighting which would not let me sleep. Rashly, and praised be rashness for it, let us know. Our indiscretion sometimes serves us well when our deep plots do pall. And that should learn us. It is a divinity that shapes our ends. Rough you them how we will. That is most certain. Up. From my cabin, my sea gown scarfed about me, in the dark, groped I to find out my two schoolfellows. Had my desire, fingered their grand commission, where I found Horatio. Ah, royal knavery, an exact command, that on the supervise, no leisure baited, no, not to stay the grinding of the axe. My head should be struck off. Is it possible? Here is the commission. Read it at more leisure. But wilt thou hear me how I did proceed? I beseech you. I sat me down, devised a new commission, an earnest conjuration from the king, that on the view and knowing of these contents, they should the bearers put to sudden death. So, Guildenstern and Rosencrantz go to it. My man, they did make love to this employment. They are not near my conscience. Tis dangerous when the baser nature comes between the pass and fell insensed points of mighty opposites. Why, what a kin is this? Does it not, think thee, stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king and whored my mother, popped in between the election and my hopes, thrown out his angle for my proper life and with such cousinage? It's not perfect conscience to quit him with this arm. It must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. It will be short. The interim is mine. And a man's life's no more than to say one. Who comes here? Your lordship is right welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Dost know this waterfly? No, my lord. Thy state is the more gracious, for tis a vice to know him. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. Your bonnet, to his right use, tis for the head. I thank your lordship. It is very hot. No, believe me, tis very cold. The wind is northerly. It is indifferent cold, my lord. Indeed. And yet, methinks it is very hot and sultry for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord, it is very sultry. As twere... I cannot tell how, uh, but, sir, his majesty bade me signify to you that he hath laid a great wager on your head. Sir, this is the matter. I beseech you, remember. Nay, good my lord, for my ease, in good faith. Sir, here is newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman, full of most excellent differences, of very soft society and great showing indeed to speak feelingly of him he is the card or calendar of gentry for you shall find in him the continent of what part a gentleman would see the concernancy sir sir what imports the nomination of this gentleman of laertes of him sir <laughs> I know you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I mean, sir, for his weapon. The king, sir, hath laid, sir, that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, Laertes shall not exceed you three hits. And it would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. How if I answer no? I mean the opposition of your person in trial. Sir! I will walk here in the hall. If it please his majesty, it is the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought. The gentleman willing and the king hold his purpose, I will win for him if I can. If not, I will gain nothing but my shame and the odd hits. Shall I read the review in, sir? To this effect, sir. After what flourish your nature will. <laughs> I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours. Yours.
You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since he was in France, I have been in continual practice. I shall win at the odds. Thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart. But it is no matter. Nay, good my lord. It is but foolery. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Since no man knows aught of what he leaves, what is to leave betimes? Let be. Take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly awake, I here proclaim was madness. Sir, in this audience, let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I have shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I do receive your offered love like love and will not run it. I embrace it freely. And will this brother's wager frankly play? Give us the foils. Come, one for me. I'll be your foil, Laertes. In mine ignorance, your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fiery off indeed. You mock me, sir. No, by this hand. Give them the foils, good Oswick. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? Very well, my lord. Your grace has laid the odds on the weaker side. I do not think it. This is too heavy. Let me see another. This one likes me well. These foils have all a length. Am my good lord? Set me the stoops of wine upon that table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, let all the battlements their ordnance fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. And in the cup, an union shall he throw. Richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. Give me the cup. And let the kettle to the trumpet speak, the trumpet to the cannoneer without, the cannons to the heavens, the heaven to earth. Now the king drinks to Hamlet. Come, begin. And you, the judges, bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. What? No! Judgment! A hit! A very palpable hit! Say! Give me drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. Give him the cup. I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while.
Another hit, what say you? A touch. A touch, I do. Our son shall win. May I have it? Take my napkin, rub thy brow. The queen carouses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good matter. Gertrude! Do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. <laughs> it is the poison cup. It is too late. I dare not drink now. By and by. Come. Let me wipe thy face. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. And yet it is almost against my conscience. Come, for the third, the Etis, you do but dally. I pray you, pass with your best violence. I'm afeard you make a wanton of me. Say you so. Come on. Oh. Nothing, neither way. Have at you now. Part them! They are incensed! Hey! Come! Again! Queen now! They bleed on both sides. How is it, my lord? How is it, Laertes? I am justly killed with mine own treachery. How does the queen? She swoons to see them bleed. No, no. No. The drink. The drink. Oh. My good. Drink. Poison. Oh, villainy. Oh, let the doors be locked! Treachery, seek it out! It is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The foul practice hath turned itself on me. Thy mother's poison. I can no more. The king! The king's to blame! Point. Envenomed too. Envenom. To thy work! <laughs> Defend me, friends! I am but hurt! Here. Thou incestuous, murderous, damned dame, drink off this potion! Is thy union here? Follow my mother! He is justly served! It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead. Horatio. Wretched queen. And you, you that look pale and tremble at this chance, that are but mutes or audience to this act, had I but time, as this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, oh, I could tell you, but let it be, Horatio, I am dead, thou livest, report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. He has yet some liquor left. I saw the man. Give me the cup. Let go. By heaven, I'll have it! Oh, God. Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, Draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. 
What warlike noise is this? Young foreign brass with conquest come from Poland gives this warlike folly. Oh, I die. Horatio, the potent poison quite o'crows my spirit. But I do prophesy the election lights on Fortin Brass. He has my dying voice. So tell him, with the occurrence more and less, which have solicited... The rest is silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Why does the drum come hither? Where is this sight? What is it you would see? What of woe or wonder? Cease your search. This quarry cries on havoc. Oh, proud death. What feast is toward in thine eternal cell that thou so many princes at a shot so bloodily hast struck? Give order that these bodies high on a stage be placed to the view, and let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. Let us haste to hear it. And call the noblest to the audience. For me, with sorrow I embrace my fortune. I have some rights of memory in this kingdom which now to claim. My vantage doth invite me. But four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. For he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royal. And for his passage, the soldier's music and the rites of war speak loudly for him. Take up the body. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. Go. Bid the soldier shoot. <laughs> 